There is a right way and a wrong mm-hmm. way to use reference tracks in Ableton Live. I'm going to tell you the difference and why you should do it this way. First, what's a reference track? It's an audio clip, usually a commercially released song, that you bring into your project to compare it to your own mix. You might use it to see how loud they put the kick drum compared to the bass or the hi-hats. You might filter everything out except the low end to see if your track is working or not compared to the other one. It also helps to recalibrate your ears to remember what type of sound you're looking for. So you want to choose a reference track that's pretty close to the style you're working in. And once you've got it picked out, it's time to bring it into Ableton. Okay, when people are starting out with references, a lot of the time they'll just drop it into an audio track like this and start going from there. And that is wrong. The reason for that is if you drop it into this track and then you have stuff on your master, I'm going to load Ozone on here. What happens then is whatever you've got going on this audio track here is being processed by the master. So you're hearing your reference track, but you're basically mastering it again. So the first part of what I did, dropping a reference track onto your audio track, that's fine. I chose mine earlier. You can drag and drop from Finder on a Mac or a Windows Explorer if you're on Windows and just drop it right onto the track. Or what you can do is set up a place here on your Ableton browser that links to your folder with all of your reference tracks like this one here. So the first thing to do after you bring in your clip is to go down here where it says Audio 2 and change this from Master to External Out. So what that'll do is instead of your signal being processed by the master here, it just sends it out to a separate clean output. The next thing you'll want to do is turn this off. So you're basically muting that track. The ideal way is to map this button here, the solo for this track, to uh, a key on your keyboard or on your MIDI controller. If you want to do that, you can go to the key button up here and then just click on the solo button here and hit whatever you want. Let's say I'm doing the zero on the number pad. And when you go back to key, as soon as you hit zero, you can tell it solos this one and mutes all of your other tracks. This will be useful later on when you want to do your comparisons. So you want to prepare your reference track. If you double click on it, first thing you want to do is remove the warp. You don't want it throwing some artifacts in there. And you want to move the arrow to a relatively busy part in your track to know where it starts. Then you'll want to add whichever effects you want to deal with. So a lot of the time I will use the tonal balance control. And while I'm at it, I will add that to the master as well. Come back to the track. I will add an auto filter. And you want to be really careful on the audio track where you have your reference. You don't want anything that changes the sound. In this case here, audio filter will change the sound, so we're going to make sure we turn that off for now. And then this tonal balance won't affect the sound, and we'll throw on a spectrum, and that won't affect it either. It's basically just a meter. Over on the master, we have ozone and tonal balance. You can add whatever you want to be dealing with over here. And the first thing I do with tonal balance control, if you have this plugin, is I'll change it to fine. It just gives you a better idea of what you're looking at. Like if we go back to this one here, if I play that track, I'm going to turn it down because I think it might have been sort of loud. This gives you an idea, but it'll just have sections. If we go to fine, it gives you a much better idea of what you're what you're dealing with, where in here it might be a little bit low. If you had some muddiness and you wanted to bring down 400 or whatever, uh, you're able to see it might be lower there, but you might have it a little bit higher here. And you're able to compare this between your reference track and whatever track you're working on. I'm not working on a track right here, but that's where you go to the master and then you'd have your tonal balance control here and be able to compare and see where you might have some issues. If you're noticing that your, uh, your highs are way, way, way up here, you might know that you'll need to tone them down a little bit. Of course, as they always say, you should be listening with your ears, not with your eyes, but this can help you notice some obvious issues that you have in your mix. So that's what you do. You'd be hitting play and in this case, just hitting the zero and it would go between the track you're working on and, and your reference track, just going back and forth. And uh, yeah, it's a really easy and quick way to do it. There are some plugins that will help you with reference tracks. Even Ozone has a reference section here and you can A, B it and go back and forth. But if you want to be doing it directly in Ableton Live, that's the way to do it. Just make absolutely sure you've got this set to external out and uh, yeah, you can go from there. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.